Hi, I'm Leslie Scase, author of Fortuna's Deadly Shadow and Fatal Solution, which came out recently. Uh, and um, when I saw the offer or the suggestion that members of the CWA might like to make a, a short video uh, on the subject of escape and coming out of lockdown, I thought it was a bit of a challenge. So what I've done uh, is to go back to my first book. I'm going to read a very short section. Uh, and then see if uh, I can make some sense out of it and give it some sort of relevance to the current day. So, here we are from Fortune's Deadly Shadow. May Roper stared through the window of the infirmary at the raindrops running down the pane and gathered her thoughts. Dr Henderson had spoken to her about this conversation with Inspector Chard. Clearly the infirmary records would need to be corrected and May would be responsible for the necessary administration so it is notifying the registrar. May was intrigued and quite excited. As a child, she often got into trouble at home with her strict parents through the reading of Penny Dreadfuls lent to her by friends. As she got older, she progressed to the less lurid, slightly more respectable writings of Wilkie Collins and the adventures of his protagonist, Walter Hartwright, in The Woman in White. Other sensation novels, like Lady Audley's, Lady Audley's Secret, followed. The one novel that really lit up her imagination however, was The Female Detective by Andrew Forrester. May took her work very seriously, but when she had free time, she could often be caught daydreaming that she was the book's heroine. Mrs Gladden. Obviously, that was all fiction, but here she was connected to a real-life mystery. Perhaps no one would mind if I helped just a bit, she muttered to herself. It wouldn't be interfering, just helping that poor policeman. So, there we are. What relevance is that? Well, the character, she's a supporting character, May Roper, but she's living at the time, uh, late Victorian age, when, um, although some, uh, particularly in the upper classes, ladies have become new women, as it was, ter as it was termed, for the average uh, young woman, your life really was, was sent down certain directions and, and usually towards uh, raising a family. Uh, and uh, and housework and not a terribly exciting life. So what we have there is May starting to evaluate what she's doing and seeing a chance to do something different and do something she really wants. Uh, and that got me thinking because I think one thing lockdown has done for us all is to actually make a stop and and evaluate things around us. It's been quite a scary time, uh, but perhaps it's a time as we come out of it when perhaps we should look at things and look at perhaps what she'd, we'd like to do uh, and say, right, well, I'm going to grasp the nettle and that is what I'm going to do. Uh, I might be expected to behave in this way or do this thing, but what do I really want? Uh, so... Um, I don't give a direct correlation to exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, as somebody who uh, often um, suffers with, you wouldn't think so, would you doing this? But uh, with, with lacking in, in confidence, particularly since a, a medical issue uh, cropped up a few years ago that made me retire. Um, but with me, that's my step. There's going to be certain things perhaps that I will now do uh, and, and because I want to do them. so. There we are. So I hope that gives uh, a degree of inspiration. I hope that uh, everybody keeps well and, you know, thinks about this and, and perhaps use this as a positive step towards not necessarily changing their life as a whole, but just to perhaps to think in a little bit more about the priorities of life and what we really want to do. So thanks very much.